Hello world! My name is Victor Engelmann and in this video I'm going to show you how you can protect your secure shell SSH server using multi-factor authentication. Yeah, um, recently I've come across this uh, article here and um, yeah, I've uh, wanted to read it for a while but uh, never actually got around to it. But uh, yeah, a couple of days ago I finally took the time and read through it and uh, yeah, it seemed manageable. So now I'm going to try this here and uh, I'm going to take you with me on that journey. Um, as you can see, Pi Up My Life, this is uh, for the Raspberry Pi. Um, and yeah, I have my Raspberry Pi ready for this, but um, I think this should work on uh, other machines too. So, um, so I don't think you really need a Raspberry Pi for this. I think you can do this also for, uh, for your SSH servers on your uh, normal PCs and whatnot. Okay, so what does it tell us how to do this? Um, well, Raspberry Pi is a system based on apt. So you have the apt package manager. Um, there are also instructions for other uh, distributions like CentOS, Red Hat with YUM and uh, DNF on Fedora. But uh, yeah, the Raspberry Pi is uh, based on Raspberry Pi OS is based on Debian, so this is what I'm going to do. Okay, here's my uh, bash shell and now I will connect to the Raspberry. Okay. Good. Now I'm connected to the SSH server of the Raspberry and uh, now I'm working inside that Raspberry system. You know, just as you do with SSH servers. Okay. Now the first thing they tell us to do is to run an up update. Um, yeah, all the <laughs> instructions for any th uh, things that you ever do in Linux systems is always uh, to, to update your package resources, but uh, I've uh, already done that, so, so I can do this now, but uh, this will not uh, find anything. Yeah, our package is up to date. Good. Now, it tells us to install a package called libpam google authenticator. I'm going to do that. Yes, I want to install it. Now it's installed. Good. Now this is the stuff for other distributions. Uh, I'm going to skip that. And now we come to the point uh, where we uh, set this up. So Google Authenticator, we need to run Google Authenticator. Do you want authentication tokens to be time-based? Well, um, this means that uh, your, um, your one-time password uh, should expire after a while and uh, you generally want that to do because um, uh, I mean, if you don't, then your uh, your tokens will last forever, and uh, then there's really no point in setting up multi-factor in the first place because uh, this factor that you're using on the second channel is always going to be the same. So, what would be the good in that? You know, it's it's like a, a fixed password then. So, yes, I want it to be time-based. Okay, now it's giving me this QR code, okay, and some uh, a secret key, a verification code, emergency scratch codes. Um, yeah, I'm not going to blur this, but um, uh, before I will upload this video, I'm gonna, going to uh, remove these keys. Uh, so 
there's no point in you trying to uh, steal them anyway. So, um, okay. So here's my Google App Store. I'm going to search for Google Authenticator, install it. Okay. Now open it. Okay, and now I have this option to scan a QR code here. Except that it's using my camera. Well, it couldn't do much without that, so I'm going to accept that. Okay, now I have to point this to the uh, to the QR code. And now I have this account here with this um, uh, with this six-digit number here, which uh, is the second factor for my authentication. Um, and yeah, the time is running out right now, so it's going to change now. There, there's a new number now, so every 30 seconds uh, this number changes, and that changes my um, password for um, for the login to the SSH server every 30 seconds. Okay, so now my cell phone is connected to this account. Uh, what else do I have to do? For the next question, you will be asked if you want to update the current user's authentication configuration file. Okay, uh, yeah, I think we should do that because otherwise I think this will not uh, stay that uh, permanently. Do you want to disallow multiple uses of the same token? Um, so if I say yes now, then um, I cannot use the same six digit number to uh, log in twice. Uh, yeah, I think that makes sense, you know, uh, if, uh, I mean, the only reason why you would uh, say no here is if you expect um, to log in, log out, and then log in again within uh, 30 seconds. And uh, I think that's a bit unlikely. Uh, I think the, uh, the security increase by uh, disallowing this, uh, I think, is uh, worth taking the risk of uh, having to wait for 30 seconds, maybe once or so. Okay. Um, do you want to increase the amount of time the generated code is considered valid? Now, um, as I said, um, this code changes uh, every 30 seconds, and I think 30 seconds is enough. You know, you could change that number here, but uh, why would you? Um, as I said, 30 seconds I think is enough. So I'm gonna say no, I don't want to um, increase that. Do you want rate limiting? So uh, if I enable rate limiting, then you cannot uh, try to log in more than three times within 30 seconds. I think that also makes sense, so I would say yes. And yeah, now the process is through. You see the uh, program has ended. So now we have some authentication um, mechanism on our Raspberry, but uh, SSH doesn't use it yet. If I were to log out and log in again, let's try that. Yeah, it worked. So uh, I could log in again without uh, 
the second factor, so the SSH server isn't yet using this. Good, so we have to change the configuration of the SSH server. Okay, we have to edit etsy pemd sshd. pemd sshd. Okay, now we are supposed to go to the bottom of the file. and insert auth required pam google authenticator.so auth required pam google authenticator so okay now also change the ssh d config What do we have to change here? Challenge response authentication, no. Okay, let's search for that. Challenge response authentication is set to no. So I'm gonna set this to yes. Okay, now just save and restart SSHD. I'm a bit uh, confused. I've, I expected to uh, uh, to lose the connection here um, because if it's restarted the SSH server, well, um, but okay, I'll just log out and now I'll try to log back in. And uh, yeah, now this should not work, right? Okay, so now it's asking me for a verification code. And yeah, this is where the second factor now comes in. So the authenticator now tells me 643437. And if I now input that 643437. Okay, it didn't work. Why did it not work? Verification code one nine four one one two. Yeah, now I'm logged in. I must have mistyped before, but okay. So, okay, so you've seen this has worked now. Um, yeah, this is really a good thing, I think, because uh, multi factor authentication is becoming so important these days because the security landscape is really going downhill, and um, yeah. Uh, as I said, uh, having multi-factor authentication is really key these days. So uh, I think it's really a good thing that we can now protect our SSH servers. I mean, um, there was a time when I exposed my SSH server on the internet, you know, using uh, port forwarding from my router to the to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I could then log into my Raspberry Pi from outside. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, I've turned that off because, uh, yeah, as I said, the security landscape uh, has gone downhill so far that it was just too risky for me. And um, but yeah, with multi-factor uh, protected SSH server, I'm at least considering to uh, expose it uh, to the Internet again. But uh, uh, I don't know. Possibly I won't. <laughs> Now down here we have another section uh, which is about multi-factor authentication for your SSH keys. Um, you can configure your SSH server to uh, let you log in without a password. Now that would of course be very <laughs> insecure, but um, um, it would use so-called public key login, which means that uh, 
yeah, you can log in without a password, but the, co the encryption that's used needs to be uh, uh, set beforehand. So you would uh, generate an, I think, RSA uh, key pair, put the uh, public key on the Raspberry, put the private key on your uh, PC, and then uh, when you connect to the uh, Raspberry, it will then say, okay, you can log in, but our communication will be uh, encrypted with this public key. So unless you have the private key, this doesn't uh, get you anything, you know? So, uh, so as long as you keep that private key really private, this is really a very secure way to log in without being bothered by uh, passwords. And uh, yeah, what you can do now here is uh, you can edit etsypmd sshd, uh, comment something out, and uh, then configure your SSH server to uh, to use public key or keyboard interactive. You might really just uh, change this to public key instead. Save it, restart the server, and then, um, then you will only be asked for the verification code. But I'm not gonna do that right now because uh, I would have to set up public key login first. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, a bit much for this video. So, uh, uh, this is all I wanted to show you for today. If you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe, and see you next time.